With the Tigers staying at nine in the college football playoff rankings, a New Year's Six bowl bid is a virtual certainty. Plus, Missouri rides its defense on the road in Pittsburgh for a big-time basketball victory. Let's talk about everything Dennis Gates and the boys did right coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks daily fantasy sports made easy. And at this point, it's pretty easy to say that Missouri is going to be in a New Year's Six bowl game. Just tonight, the college football playoff committee put out another batch of rankings. And now that Missouri is is ninth at this point, it just, it just doesn't seem likely that Missouri can go much lower than ninth at this point. In fact, actually, I can tell you just about precisely what the odds over, at least at FanDuel Sportsbook, of this event are happening. Because according to Gabe DeArmond over at Power Missouri, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna trust Gabe on this one. So if he's wrong, go blame him. But seriously, I'm sure Gabe has this right. He says the only teams behind Mizzou that can change their resumes this week are 14th and 18th. So the only way, the absolute only way that Missouri cannot make a New Year's Six bowl game is the following scenario: if Iowa beats Michigan, if Oklahoma State beats Texas. And also, Texas is going to have to stay ahead of Mizzou under that scenario. And Louisville beats Florida State. Well, Florida State would also have to stay ahead of Mizzou as well. That seems pretty likely. The Texas one, well, that's a lot more questionable considering both teams would have two losses. But considering all three of those things would have to happen, let's parlay all of those events over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Iowa winning, Oklahoma State winning, and Louisville winning. You bet a dollar on that over at FanDuel Sportsbook, and you win $192.50. So in other words, the odds of that are pretty astronomical. It was basically the Kansas City Royals' odds of winning the 2014 World Series before that season in spring training. By the way, the Royals, if you didn't forget, made the World Series and still ultimately lost in seven games. So that just gives you an idea of how unlikely that scenario is. So, by the way, for all you Ole Miss fans out there, how you doing? Nice to see you out in my, in my YouTube comments here lately. But obviously Ole Miss did move up a spot to number 11. They're still behind Penn State, though. So, I don't know, perhaps I should cancel my appearance with Stephen Willis of Lock on Ole Miss and he should go argue and yell at the locked on Nittany Lions guy instead but no in all seriousness that show is definitely still coming your way on Thursday a very special crossover edition of locked on Mizzou but you know what obviously some good news there on the football field and some really good news on the basketball court tonight as Missouri wins a road game on the in the ACC SEC challenge. This could ultimately be a quad one road victory by the end of the season. So a quality victory without a doubt and a really impressive victory by Missouri as well. It felt like the Tigers and Dennis Gates and company really figured something out tonight. I felt like they found their identity. If you actually listened to my show yesterday, what I was saying, my biggest takeaway is the Tigers have to start leaning on their defense more, in particular the rim protectors 
on the team. And if you notice, you look at the box score. Missouri lost the free throw battle big time, but guess what? They won the rebounding battle, which is not something that happened very often last year, especially against a Pitt Panther team that coming into this ball game was one of the elite rebounding teams in the country so far on this young season. And as far as I can tell, Gates did indeed play the rim protectors the entire game. And by the rim protectors, I mean Aiden Shaw, Jordan Butler, and Connor Vanover. And by the way, after post game coming coming into this basketball game, Coach Gates said that Connor Vanover has actually spent the last couple practices on the scout team and wasn't actually a part of the game plan. He wasn't going to play tonight. Well, he ends up playing 20 minutes tonight and 20 really important minutes, I would say, and asked what the difference was tonight for Vanover. Gates said, quote, the difference was me as a coach. I'm sorry, wait, what What does that mean? I, a lot of times I got to say, I have very few criticisms of Dennis Gates, but going back to the Isaiah Mosley stuff last year, sometimes his messaging can be a little bit confusing with the media. But I will say this, the best part of, of Dennis Gates and his confusion is his ability to create confusion in the opposition. Because let me tell you, Coach Gates, one thing we were reminded tonight is that man can still design and come up with the perfect out of timeout play at seemingly the perfect time. And really, Caleb Grill was the beneficiary of two excellent Dennis Gates play calls out of timeouts. One Grill knocked down a three, and the other at the about the last minute of the game or so got grill got grill excuse me a layup where where he basically s slipped a screen that he was setting for Sean East to the red hot Sean East by the way was used sort of as a Luther Burden like distraction in that moment like Kirby Moore likes to use him around the goal line a lot so just in case you had forgotten Dennis Gates can still design a heck of a play out of a timeout and is a really good head coach no doubt about that in terms of not just recruiting but X's and O's as well and speaking of those rim protectors, another thing I mentioned on yesterday's program is it just felt like when Noah Carter is playing the five, when he is Missouri's de facto center, obviously Carter is not a true center by any stretch of the imagination, but it just felt like that was a recipe for disaster for, for Missouri, especially on the defensive end of the court. But tonight, when you saw Carter playing, it seemed to me exclusively, there may have been a, a minute or a possession or so here and there where Carter was at the de facto five, but the lion's share of the time, he was definitely playing next to one of those rim protectors I talked about. Well, to me, not only did Carter benefit from that defensively, but also I thought he benefited from it offensively as well. And I, I suspected this yesterday also, that Carter, once he's matched up with, instead of the five men for other teams, instead of you're playing against the de facto power forwards, and again, I say de facto because in modern basketball, there really aren't a lot of power forwards. A lot of times, these are combo forwards or, or guards masquerading as a four man. Think about Kim English back in the day for Missouri in the, in the famous 2012 season. A lot of teams are, are playing maybe not quite that small at the four position, but certainly, you know, guys like Javon Crudup and, and Carl Malone really aren't walking through that door anymore. But Noah Carter is sort of your rare player these days that is able to play with his back to the basket, despite not being a center by any stretch of the imagination. But he is able to use his big six foot six body to punish guys that are certainly smaller than him, but also just the same size as him as well. I think his bully ball game just doesn't work nearly as well against guys that are, say, six foot ten. But against somebody who's six foot seven, he can make it happen under there. So again, I think Carter really benefited from that extra size next to him, not only defensively, but offensively as well. And coming up, I don't know if Aiden Shaw's reverse dunk tonight was a top five or 10 Missouri dunk. 
of all time, but it was pretty, pretty good. And I got we got to talk more about Aiden Shaw and the rest of this basketball game here coming up. But first, I want to tell you about Prize Picks because Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and more importantly, it's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. For example, choose two or more players from any sport, like say Patrick Mahomes and LeBron James. Pick more or less on their projected stats, whether it's points, rebounds, assists, passing yards, whatever it might be. Just make your picks and also choose flex or power play. And flex pet and flex plays Easy for me to say. You can still win your entry if one pick misses. In power plays, well, there are higher payouts, but you must get all of your picks right. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day. And for your second listen, why not check out some live sports content? Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked on, plus our national shows covering every league. Again, that's Locked on Sports Today on YouTube. Subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 24-7 a streaming a channel. So there have been some great dunks in Missouri in Missouri history. Of course, a couple come to mind, including one that didn't count by Keon Dooling in Allen Fieldhouse many years ago. Now also Ricky Paulding practically jumping over a member of the Kansas State Wildcats in Bramlage Coliseum was pretty exciting back in the day as well, but perhaps not for that Kansas State Wildcat who may have got a part of Ricky Paulding's anatomy on top of his head in that particular moment. But you know what? Aiden Shaw, one of the really most impressive dunks I've seen in recent Missouri history, often alley-oop catches it, reverse dunks, not, not, not a showboat play either. That was just him adjusting his body in midair to complete the play as it needed to happen. So just an impressive thing there by Shaw. Now I have to admit, I would have liked to have seen so far for Shaw, the rest of Shaw's offensive game to have maybe taken a little bit more of a step in particular his jump shot I suppose we haven't really seen that just yet but you gotta say man Aiden Shaw is kind of a menace defensively so far with that athleticism he has and just his motor he is all over the place and also really his ability to play above the rim along with Connor Vanover's ability to play above the rim as well obviously him and Shaw do it in a much different fashion. But at the end of the day, both of those guys and Jordan Butler, really maybe to a slightly lesser extent, but also Butler as well on the offensive end. Those three guys aren't just rim protectors. They're also helping to give Missouri an offensive presence vertically at the rim that's actually causing them to stretch the defense in a different way that they weren't able to last year. And obviously Missouri played a similar style last year with five guys around the perimeter a lot. That's all about spacing. That's horizontal sort of on the floor spacing. Well, vertical spacing, the above the rim spacing. Hey, there's more, there's more space that you have to defend as a defense. And right now that's making a, it obviously presented a big problem for the Pitt Panthers tonight. And they didn't really have an answer for those guys in the middle of the paint. Now, one thing that I don't really have an answer for personally, one thing that continues to perplex me a bit is why Tamar Bates doesn't play more. Now, in the first half, Bates got quite a bit of clock for sure, quite a few minutes, ends up playing 20 minutes on the night, but it just felt like the the vast majority of those minutes were in the first half. And considering how well Bates played in the first half, in my opinion, 
Well, maybe maybe I'm just missing something on the defensive end of the court with Bates because offensively, I don't know that he could have played much better. Perhaps defensively, there's some lapses there. I don't know. It just seems like in terms of length-wise and athleticism, he's got p- plenty of potential on the defensive end of the court. Again, I don't even know that that's the problem. I- I'm just trying, or even if there is a problem in Dennis Gates' opinion. Again, this is just perplexing me a bit because, in my opinion, he he just needs to be getting more minutes, without a doubt. Obviously, Gates has shown the willingness to play a lot of guys a lot of minutes in terms of Sean East plays 33 tonight, Noah Carter plays 27, 25 for Caleb Grill, and one of his best games, I think, so far in a Tiger uniform, without a doubt. And by the way, Nick Honor only with 23 minutes tonight. So for for whatever reason, Nick just could not get anything going tonight. Didn't get a point, committed four fouls, in fact. And by the way, four fouls on East as well. And it just seems like that's real interesting, right? The two point guards end up with eight combined fouls. Once again, this trend is obviously continuing here. This is something I talked about from game one for Missouri is, boy, it sure seems like it's going to be hard to play defense, especially on perimeter players who drive with reckless abandon into the paint. Well, we've seen this a lot in the NBA recently, especially superstar players. At this point, LeBron James, he puts his head down, and he, he's gonna, if he initiates contact, he's going to get the call more often than not. Well, it seems like that has made its way to college basketball as well. And as I've said before, and again, if you're an everydayer, I apologize. I don't want to beat a dead horse here. But again, I'm fine with taking the charge out of the game to some extent. The the offensive foul, the charge play, had become so prevalent in college basketball recently, just too prevalent, in my opinion, to the point of absurdity that, that college basketball had become a flop fast. So I'm all for taking that out. But at the same time, you've got to allow some degree of contact, especially contact that's not knocking the ball handler unfairly off of his path. Too often tonight, and just throughout this season, I see defenders sliding their feet, beating the offensive player to the spot, taking a little bit of contact to the chest, and only for them to be punished for, again, the offensive player just gets the benefit of the doubt, seemingly with every contact on a drive now in college basketball. I just think, once again, we've got to see more balance there or else we're just going to continue to see way too many free throws throughout college basketball. And and frankly, I want to see live ball play a lot more than I want to see dead ball free throws. And coming up, two players from last year's Tiger squad made the journey to Pittsburgh to see this year's team. That says a lot about Dennis Gates and the culture he's developed so far to me. So let's talk more about that and this win, this big time win against the Pitt Panthers coming right up. But first, let's talk about LinkedIn jobs, because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. Well, that's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. And I'm telling you, you don't want to just leave this up to a Google search or anything like that, just perusing Craigslist, something like that. Use LinkedIn Jobs because it's not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than 1 billion professionals, which which makes it the best place to hire online. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. You know, unless you're Nick honor or Noah Carter for the most part, or Sean East, of course, for the most part, Minutes on this team have been pretty unpredictable, and obviously that's not ideal for any individual basketball player. You'd love to know what your what your role is going to be, and you'd especially like to know that it's going to be a sizable role. Well, that's not always necessarily the case night to night for these Missouri basketball players, including Connor Vanover, many of these newcomers and the freshmen 
as well. But I couldn't help notice when Sean East hit that beautiful step back three pointer into the right corner to put Missouri up 62 to 52. Well, the bench was absolutely loving it. It looked to me like like they were really locked in and and forgive the pun there, by the way. But seriously, that the freshmen were were very much cheering loudly. Anthony Robinson, who didn't get as much action, Jordan Butler too in the second half as they did in the first half. Again, it just seemed like they were very much into the game and cheering on their teammates. And I just think that's really, really impressive because more often than not, when guys are starting to get their minutes yanked around individually, well, it's easy for them to start to pout a little bit. So I just think it's really impressive the kind of culture that Dennis Gates has built so far in just a short time here at Missouri. And I think the fact that Trey Gomillion and Ben Sternberg were in the crowd tonight, hanging out together, cheering on the Tigers and actually coaching from the stands, as Dennis Gates suggested. Again, that just tells me a lot that those guys made the trip there for this ball game. It's really impressive stuff and and just just something that you love to see for sure. And by the way, speaking of the rotation, I did notice that five minutes into the ball game, no substitutions for Missouri. They played their starting five for the first five minutes, and that's a real change because while that, the substitutions seem a little haphazard, they happen so much here early in the season for Gates. Well, obviously it's not haphazard. There's got to be method to his madness, no doubt about that. And Missouri eventually did play 12 guys in the first half. Mabor Majak, just a, about a minute there. Trent Pierce, a few minutes. But in the second half, obviously a much shorter rotation the starters same starters as the first half plus a a heavy dose of Connor Vanover as well that was mostly what you saw in the second half for the most part I know there's a guy I'm forgetting here probably in the backcourt but regardless a really impressive win for Missouri once again and by the way I I will point this out as well I, I do complain about the announcers a lot on television. Well, I'll be honest. I don't have, I know it was Randolph Childress and his partner, the play-by-play man there, Randolph Childress, of course, a former Wake Forest guard, a guy I remember very well from my childhood as a big time college basketball fan growing up. So it was fun to see him again. And again, his partner there on ESPN use, they had great chemistry and a really fun interview with Sean East after the game who has quite the personality on himself as well. So definitely want to hear more from Sean East here in his last year with the Missouri Tigers. He seems like he has a really fun personality. So anyway, with all that being said tomorrow on the program, going to be talking to Stephen Willis. This is by tomorrow. I mean, Thursday here on locked on Mizzou, a special crossover edition Stephen Willis, not very happy. He thinks Ole Miss is very much obviously better than Missouri this year. Obviously, I'm going to disagree, especially with the word obviously, but you know what? We'll have the argument. We'll fight it out, and and hopefully there'll be something left of his corpse after I'm done with it. But hey, until then, I'll see you all right here on Locked on Mizzou.